Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Matthew recorded these words of Jesus as the Lord was discussing with his disciples what kind of relationship those who will be ready to meet him at his second coming will have been having with him. Many claim him and claim to know him as their Lord and Savior, but the problem is he doesn't know most of them. Are you one of those who he will shun? My close friend, Dr. Reverend Martel Wisdom is back with me to break down how we can ensure that we are known in heaven. Stay tuned. You're listening to the Monday End Time Talk podcast, sharing timeless truths for the times. Well, greetings in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining in to another timeless truth for the times. We appreciate you clicking that play button today. And boy, do we have an exciting and interesting episode uh, to dive right into. I have my longtime friend, Dr. Reverend Martel Wisdom with me once again uh, for another exciting episode of the Monday End Time Talk podcast. And boy, I tell you, it is a good time to be a biblically born again believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, hey, I know I, I know it looks dreary out there, folks, but God does his most jaw dropping work in the darkness. Uh, you can't really see the light that well when it's when it's when it's light outside. But when it gets a little dark, that's when the light does its best work. Um, so while it may seem uh chaotic and 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 it is the world is chaotic there is a god who psalm 93 says he is the lord that reigneth over all amen and so i i'm glad you're a part of this podcast today uh, it is our hope and desire that your faith is extremely bolstered in the word of god and that you gain some insights that will help you in your journey uh with the lord uh, all the way to his soon coming return. Praise God. Um, so I, real quick before we dive in and uh, before Martel jumps in here with his opening uh, thoughts and words on this subject, we're talking about Wi-Fi or dial up. What's your relationship like? Wi-Fi or dial up. What's your relationship like? Um, please plug into our social media for the Monday End Time Talk podcast. We have recently created uh, an Instagram page where you can uh, follow more content f- uh, from 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 the Monday and Time Talk podcast. We're doing a new segment called the the, uh, the the Met Minute, and we take about I take about a couple minutes um, every so often to record a short video on a particular topic or subject, and uh, that's the only place you'll be able to get those exclusive videos. So make sure you go and follow us on Instagram and uh, follow our uh, Keystone Church page on Facebook and YouTube, and you can get all of our content there. Ooh, that's a mouthful, Andre. Well, I call you Andre. They know you as Martel, but how you doing, brother? I'm doing well. Just glad to be here. And in this season, this rem- reminds us that our protector, our only protector, and our sole protector is Jesus. And it's just yes. very humbling. It's very humbling. Yes, absolutely. There, there is. Uh, there's only one one place to look, and that's up. Because I will tell you what, there is. I, I've I've said this so many times to the congregation that I have the privilege to pastor. I've said this so many times. I I actually want to destroy your hope in anything in this world. So, <laughs> part of my goal in ministering and leading is really to 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 just about destroy people's hope in the things of this life no matter what you're doing even if it's a even if, even if you're doing a good cause that's only going to last but so long you know you you may you may be coaching your little your little Susie and your little Johnny on 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 their on their uh, soccer team at 8 years old 9 years old then you know you're teaching them good 
you know, teamwork values, and that's all great. But at the end of the day, don't depend on them to go pro and to take care of you in the nursing home because none of that's n- none of none of that's a sure thing. Praise God. Uh, right. I know that's a I know that's a silly analogy or silly example, but it's true. Jesus is, is the true. only hope, bro. Amen. Yes, it is very true. I agree. It's very true, and uh, it's it's so many distractions that mess up our connection, which we'll get into. So, well, let's get into it right now. Wi-Fi or dial-up? What's your relationship with Jesus like? Um, lead us off here, bro. What? 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 Where do we start when we talk about? what a true biblical fellowship looks like with the Lord. What is he interested in? Well, I can start with what he's not interested in. And I remember vividly when we got our first computer, and I think it was probably 0203, I think. And I was sitting there at the desktop, and you would have to wait about 30 minutes to dial up. Kind of, if you picked up the phone, picked up the phone, it would mess up the dial-up connection. You have to wait 30 minutes for it to dial back up. And you were in a static position. The only place you can get internet was in a one static position. And so uh, that is what it does not look like. It's not one position. It's not one location. It's not only a certain time. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's what it does not look like. So I'll answer that with what it does not look like. So it's not static. It's not just in one place. Um, your 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 Christianity, your your discipleship, doesn't just occur inside of a four walls that we right. call a church, right? Right. It's 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 more than that. In fact, in fact, I would even go so far as to say, bro, that our Lord is quite offended when we regulate all that He is offering us to just a two hour a week church service on a Sunday morning. And we try to pass that off as relationship when really it's just as religious or religiosity as, uh, you know, uh, those, those other denominations or those other religions that, that we don't think are right, or we know is not right. Well, when we, when we approach God with this mentality of, I can only pray at this time and church is the only place that uh, anything is going to happen. We're, we're no better than, than the faults and the people that we claim are in false, are in false religion. Right. Right. And I think that is the misunderstanding sometimes um, in general with, with our relationships. I think in general, we talk about relationships in general. I don't think we know how to relate to each other. Mm. I think that has, as we've gotten more things, I think we have less and less true relationships. Um, and the ones that people will say they have true relationships, one little small thing can break up the relationship. Um, and I'm not talking about just married people. I'm talking about, because everyone is not married. And so, you know, um, you know, you're talking about, you know, with your best friend or with your uh, children um, or with your uh, siblings, or with parents, parents or with yeah. you know people, whoever you consider loved ones. Um, it's so interesting to me how easy I have, and I've seen other people ha- lose relationships that they say were they thought were valuable, but became not as valuable as soon as something happened. And so I think it's a two way thing. I don't think we're having great relationships here, and I think that's mirrored with the lack of relationship we have with our savior. Yeah. Um, let me, let me, let me shift gears real quick and ask you this. Uh, I, cause I think this flows, flows well. Uh, this actually, you sent me this question for this, for this episode, and I'm going to ask it to you. How is fellowshipping different from traditional prayer? And I guess it helps to define what we mean by traditional prayer. So traditional prayer is static, like I described. Okay. Um, the purpose is more of one way. Um, you're doing the person's doing the talk, the talking, and God is doing the listening. 
mm. right? Um, <laughs> allegedly. Um, so, <laughs> so, so that's that's allegedly. that's that's the traditional prayer, right? And so the um, another part of the traditional prayer it has one purpose. The sole purpose is you. Yeah. Um, just like you have people that we know, and we've done this too that we just wanted them to hear us, but we didn't really care what they had to say. Exactly. And so that's the um, traditional prayer. And then the fellowshipping part now is two way. Um, And now the fellowshipping, remember um, Jesus (laughs) said in uh, John 1 14, it said the word became flesh and dwelt among us, right? Which was Jesus. So that means that Jesus is the word which he is the Bible. So when we read, so we are both married, and if God were to supernaturally supply us with a book about our spouse, unless we were arrogant, we would read it, right? And I then, sure would. Yeah, and we would. And so that's what Jesus Christ has supplied with the Bible. He has described, he has given us a book that tells you about him, but that's one side of it. That's the autobiography, if I'm saying that right. And then mm-hmm. the other part is communication he told the woman um i believe at the well that you're going to worship me in spirit and in truth the spirit is a communication through talking through that invisible being because he's a spirit god's a spirit and um you know that relationship talking talking to him him talking back to you and him prompting you different different things and a supernatural being done because all supernatural things have to happen by faith because faith coming by hearing hearing the word of god nothing right. supernatural happens without faith um, that's why you can't please God without faith. So word of wisdom, um, um, the word of knowledge, a uh, gift of faith, all of that stuff happens. A prophecy all happens by faith because it's invisible. That's, that's the, that's the, um, that's the spirit part. The truth part is the physical word of God, right? And that's the logos. That's the, that we, what we would in layman terms call the Bible. So those two parts are parts of fellowship. Reading the word is a, is fellowship and also um, talking with God, writing things. And I have a different level to that when you're ready. Um, but Go I'll ahead. Print. Okay. So um, I will, and please add in to this as you feel, because I have this written down. So mm-hmm. la- I call this the language transition. There's five parts to language transition. All right. Um, we have small children. Um, I have a um, three-year-old twins, and you have um, your son is going to be um, two soon. So you know you understand this because they're learning the language, right? Mm-hmm. What is the first thing they do? They've always heard, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Then they start to what? Talk. Talk. Speak. M- and mimic. Right. And then they start to what? Eventually. Uh, uh, put together sentences. Right. And then after that, and that's still speaking, what's the next level? Hearing. Listening. Hearing, speaking, then reading. Reading. Right? Okay. Yeah. And then you start teaching and then you start writing and you start discipling through your writing, your teaching. And so those are the five levels, hearing, speaking, reading, teaching, Right, or six, sorry, writing, and then the manifestation of that is going to be discipleship through writing and teaching. And that's what scripture, so, that's, so, the, go ahead. So, so that last part is reproducing, really, is, yes. is what we're saying. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes, reproducing. Reproducing yourself. Right, right. Reproducing yourself through writing and teaching. And so think about it. scripture is what? <laughs> Literally, writing and teaching that was scripture that's discipling us. And that's why the levels number six is the penultimate of all that. Because now I've written something, I let it go. For example, um, churches that have small groups, usually the pastor or somebody writes the curriculum and then they let it go. Wow. Well, I'm not teaching it, but your spirit's in it. Right. Mm-hmm. So there's reproducibility, which is a great word, because that's exactly what it is, because you can't say all the stuff. Yeah. And one one thing I found and I feel led to say this is that when you try to find small group curriculum, I've tried to find it. Most of the time they have they have the person that's the author 
teaching like 15 minutes of the segment and then you're supposed to that's the reproducibility right as opposed to giving you a physical document that someone can teach someone else right and so what's what <laughs> that jesus didn't do that right if he wanted to make video he could have but he made it writing scripture is writing not a video why i don't know but that's why we, that's how he did it yeah yeah and i think all of this uh what we're saying is, is here in, in layman's term is when we have this flow this progression so so as you mentioned we both have small children my son is two years old now my relationship with him right now is really him just listening or rather he is just trying to get what he wants or what he mm. thinks he needs okay <laughs> th th and this is very important when we're when we're discussing wi-fi versus dial-up Okay, my son at two years old, he only knows dial up. He, he's mm. and I expect him to know that because he's right. he, he's new. He's just born. OK, he's a new babe uh, in the world. Um, and so he's trying to he's trying to learn his world, his circumstance, what's around him every day is a learning experience. Uh, and so but he doesn't have the the ability to have a a two way relationship yet as we would define it as adults. Okay. He, he only knows how to try to get what he wants. And then if, if we're not, or if we're unwilling to give him what he wants in that moment, he, he does one of two things. He'll either turn his attention to something else that he can have or do or, or he'll throw a fit. Right. Yes. He, he, he doesn't know how to have a, a discussion about it or, or, and, or he doesn't know, he doesn't understand how to deal with no, okay? right? He can't see beyond his desires, his own desires. This right. is so important. But, but, but listen, when he's six years old, I expect the relationship to progress and change right. and mature. When he's right. 12 years old, it's even more, more so right. now. And then when he's 18, now we can have, now I can have the type of relationship with my son that's on an adult level when, by the time he's 18, because yeah. he can, he, what you just said, he can, he can hear now by 18. He can, he can, uh, he can speak. speak, he can read, he can write. Uh, and and on, uh, not that I would want him to do this, but if he, if he happened to to slip up and make a mistake, he could reproduce and have his own kid and right. stuff by the time right. he's 18. So, so he's two, he can't do all that yet, but that's okay. But if you are 18 and you're still acting like two or six or thinking in th that way, that's, that's a serious issue, right? That That's, there's something stunting your growth. We, we would say that you are m medically retarded and that's not a derogatory wow. term that's a term that they use in the medical field so i'm not being der derogatory wow. you, you see what i'm saying and, and it's those people that are uh, let, let's just say for instance 18 years old in the lord per se oh, but yet lord. still still using dial up be careful this, pastor. <laughs> this is this is where we have a, a disconnect in 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 the flow of the uh, the things of God, the church, and what God is trying to do, he he is he is much more taught. And some people say, "Well, you know, you got new babes coming into the church," and uh, I'm not just I'm not talking about one particular. I'm just talking about the church in general. Right, right. You got new babes coming into the church, and some folks are like, "Well, you don't deal with that new babe. Uh, you don't you don't expect of that new babe the things that you're expecting of me, Pastor." Jeez. Well, you've been alive for 18 years. <laughs> okay. Mm. You see the difference here. Right. I'm not going to treat I'm not going to treat Landon, my son, like he's 18 years old right. cuz he's not. Right. It's really that simple. Right. Uh, boy, don't get me going. I, I need to I need to take a chill yeah. pill. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, I actually but this I'll, is the I'll, reality. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, and I'll, I'll uh, add a sentence to each one of these levels really quick. Um, just in case you think, oh, I just made this up. I was bored. No, this is this is this is scripturally um, sound. Hearing, my sheep know my voice. Another they will not follow. Right. Um, speaking, we believe, so therefore we speak. We speak. Right. right? Um, <clears throat> reading the Bereans read the scripture. More what? 
they search is it perfectly the or excellently search the scripture more excellently or perfectly uh, i would have to look it up real quick when, that's acts, the, acts 17 yeah right acts 17 so you can look it up yourself guys acts 17 all right so hearing to believe to speech to reading to personally understanding or studying right mm. Um, teaching you ought to be teachers. That's um, um, Hebrews five twelve. Hebrews five, yeah. Hear, hearing to belief, to speech, to reading, to writing down what we understand, and then we have um, writing, which is the fifth level, and that's the our apostles wrote, and that's why we have scripture today, right? And yeah. we said scripture does not did not come by man, right? It did not come by the will of man. But pe- men of God were moved at, by the Holy Ghost and they spake, right? That's, mm-hmm. um, that's uh, I believe, First Peter 2, right? And then lastly, you have discipleship through these items. And now that's, that is ultimately what you want to get to because a fivefold ministry is not for you just to do that, but it's to build up saints so they can minister to people and build up the body. Mm-hmm. And that's very important. And that's um, um, Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. Right. For the equipping uh, of the saints. And so that that's what we that's when we we get this full circle. This uh, we I call it close the circuit. Right. Yes. Uh, ma- m- many, many, many believers still have an open circuit where they're just yeah. being fed. OK, mm. they 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 come to church and it's all about, oh, I need a word today and I yes. need a touch today. And, and right. God come and bless me today. And the preacher better have a good message for me today. Mm. And I need to like that song. It's, it's a, it's a need based lifestyle mm. relationship. And you can't call it a relationship, obviously, if it's just mm-hmm. you, you getting when, what you need. That's, that's called, that's really called a, um, a, uh, not a, not a dialogue, but a monologue. OK, mm. it's it's all about it's all about you. That's dial up. Okay? Right. I, I, I'm, I'm only trying to connect with my savior, my God, right. the person who's supposed to be my Lord, who I claim as my God, because I right. say I'm a Christian. Dial up is you only you, you you're only interested in receiving stuff from him. Mm-mm-mm. He's like your heavenly Santa Claus. OK, right. Wi-Fi, on the other hand, you mentioned mm-hmm. this before we even got on the podcast, is uh, Wi-Fi is constantly connected, even when you don't necessarily need to use the Internet. Right. It's it there. still remains connected. Right. <laughs> Praise God. Now, and what it does can that be used by like? it can be used by various sources. Right. Because if you come to my house, you can put 10 different devices on my same Wi-Fi. Ooh. Boy, we're going to go down the road. We're going to be on here another 20 minutes. Right, because cause the dial-up can only connect to one device. One device. Right. Oh my God. And that, that one device is one way. I guide to the person, right? It doesn't mean that you're not going to grow. It doesn't mean that God's not talking to you. It's restricted. Right. Yes. But, you can, but you can operate in these five flows, and you can connect with different people as God connects through you to different people at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, the goal is flow. And I think a uh, man, I got to get to this real quick. I, I think a really, really good um, G- Jesus, Jesus talked about this, um, of course, not not in the terms of Wi-Fi versus dial up. But we can get the picture of this in Matthew chapter seven, um, verse 21 through 23 or 24. It's pr- pretty familiar passages of scripture here. And I want to read those passages, but then I want to give quick context here. Um, so Matthew chapter seven, beginning at verse number 21. Listen up, y'all. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Verse 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, oh, have Lord. we not prophesied in thy name? Ho- mm. Hold on. I've done some good things, Lord. Oh, I've been Lord. a good person. <laughs> in thy oh, name Lord. have cast out devils. In thy oh, name God. done many wonderful works. Mm. Then will I profess unto them, I never 
knew you. I oh never. Now, now, somebody might think, well, how in the world? I thought he was the all-knowing knowing God. How does he not know me? Surely mm -hmm. he knows. Yes, he knows you literally. He knows who you are. He knows of you. He knows the very thoughts of your head. He knows the very intents of your heart. We're not talking about a head knowledge. We're talking about a relationship intimacy right. knowledge. Right. That's what the word means. The, mm -hmm. the Greek word kenosko literally means to become known of, to be acquainted with, as in uh, and I want to be, you, you know, this is a PG podcast, but this is what right. the, the the definition is, as in a the uh, Jewish idiom for sexual intercourse. That that's that's what the word means, right? Genosko or genosko, right. however you say it, right? So that's intimacy, uh, Martel, right? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And, he, and he's saying, if I don't know you intimately in an approved relationship, a biblically <laughs> sound relationship, oh, yes, I stole the, I stole that line from from a great man of God, but <laughs> a biblically approved relationship, one mm -hmm. that I approve of. It, it's not so much. Oh, well, I know him. I know God. I know right. his name. I know. No, no, no. Does he know you? All Are right. you known in heaven? Wow. You know, what I think of. When the uh, the seventy in in Luke ten came back, and they were said, "Wow, even the devils." And then Jesus said, "Don't be excited that the devils respond to you. Mm. Be excited that you're written where in the Lamb's Book of Life My in heaven." God. <laughs> yeah, and, and there's and there's a way to not only get that but maintain Ooh. that. Wow. Right. And so, listen, mm -mm. listen. We're we're not on here to demoralize. We're we're on here to give uh, hope and some of our insight, which is very little. We're just a couple of nobodies, okay? But what I am thankful for is that because of great men of God that came before me, yes, that that gave me, and they freely received, and they freely were willing to give. I tuned my ear and my spirit by the grace of God into that. And then I took it and practiced it and tapped into it and, and had a sin uh, cultivated sincere relationship with my Jesus. And now I can say I have that for myself. That's all we're offering is right. an, un an understanding of what Jesus is actually looking for. Right. And so if you're not interested in actual relationship and flow and constantly being connected like Wi-Fi and being led by the spirit, the scripture says in Romans chapter eight, um, uh, they that are led by the spirit, they only are the sons mm. of God. Mm -mm. Amen. So important. Yeah. So important. And that's fellowship. And as and as you mentioned that, I will say this one quick point. There's three levels in God. There are um, children. Right, um, it's said over and over in scripture. I'm not going to use too much of that. Then there's sons, like you just said. Then there's fathers, and that's why Paul got upset and said, "said I believe in a letter to Timothy he said you had ten thousand instructors, but not many fathers." Mm. And we have to progress. If you're at a child stage, try to get to a son stage. Try to be led by God. If you're at a son stage, try to get to a father stage and produce sons. Mm. That's good, bro. Yeah. And you know what? In this in this season of of great confusion and delusion everywhere, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you can get it everywhere now. Uh, right. the, en the enemy is running a two for one deal if you want to be deluged and confused. I'm serious, man. Oh, <laughs> it's crazy. And so so we got to be careful. Um, and, and, and especially in this end time, my friend, uh, uh, in this end time, we're so close. We have got to get it together because God is moving forward with the people who want relationship and those who are satisfied with religion. You're going to have an extremely difficult time catching up. He's going he's going to have mercy and folks who really want to catch up and they'll put their all into into it to catch up. They'll catch up. Yeah. But it's going to be, I'm telling you, it's going to be much more difficult. The Bible says in one place, if you can't run with the footmen, how in the world are you going to be able to run when the horses start going? Right. The horses are not here yet. So that's the, that's the good part. Cause <laughs> so, I, I can tell you yeah. that for a fact. I don't know much about too much about end time, but I know the horses are not here yet. I know that for a fact. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people, some people think, and this has been a long. Uh, this is probably, of course, a thinking since the beginning of time. Maybe uh, some people think, well, you know, I'll get myself together when when it's clear that, that things are really, mm-hmm. you know, you think you do you really think the Lord's going to allow you to right. discern Jeez. when things are, are getting out of control? The Scripture mm-hmm. says in Galatians chapter six, and well, I'm feeling it right now. The Scripture says in Galatians chapter six, uh, "Be not deceived, for God is not mocked. Oh, Whatsoever Lord. a man soweth, that shall he also reap." You're not gonna put the pull the wool over his eyes. You're not gonna be able to bamboozle your way into the kingdom. No, either you want it or you don't, and it's only gonna get more difficult to discern what's really going on as time goes on. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Let, let, let's take a quick transition. I want to come back real quick and share a couple of stories. Uh, your story, one of your stories about a key turning point in, in, in your relationship with God, um, something that you remember that just sparked you and changed you. And then I'll share something real quick and then we'll end the podcast on that. But uh, right now we'll take a quick transition b- break and we'll be right back uh, to tell those stories. Please don't turn off this episode. God bless you. world is filled with a ton of noise. This podcast aims to share noise that benefits your soul, not with subjective truths, but with objective biblical realities. So thanks for lending us your ears. Now, here's more end time talk. are going to jump right in now. Um, I want to talk about some relationship stories. You ever seen that hashtag, uh, Martel, called relationship goals? I don't oh, know if you've ever seen Lord. <laughs> Lord, help us. Yeah, I've seen books and different things on it, and they got a part of the idea, but, you know, it's amazing that you can find everything in the Bible. It's it's amazing if you look it's, hard it's enough. Amazing. It's oh, amazing. Oh, my goodness. Hopefully we that get is... the revelation. I'm getting it. Yeah. So, so let, let's do f- about five minutes here or less. Okay. Okay. Let's start with you. What was, what is one key turning point in your life? Uh, and it could be at any point in, in, in your history, that was the most significant uh, landmark that you remember that just turned you around and caused your signal strength to be much more greater. In uh, 2016, I remember sitting on the couch. 2016 was a very, was a very difficult year for me, um, for my flesh, but it was a good spiritual year. Um, and so I was sitting on my couch in my in our home, and I was like, man, I'm living a good life. I'd go to work, come home, have no real responsibilities, didn't have any kids. So I could do this forever. Mm-hmm. And then something, a thought came to me. It's like, you said you're going to really sit here and be comfortable? For the rest of your life? Yeah. What's wrong with that? So you're really going to sit here and be comfortable for the rest of your life? And that happened for a little bit. And then I said, you know, I need you to, I thought was like, you need to go back to school, get your doctorate. And I was like, I I don't really want to do that. I'm not really interested in, I'm comfortable. And I just, it kind of just, the thought kind of went away. And so I went back to school, ended up going back to school. Um, and it was kind of confirmed because I remember asking my um, spouse, um, we, I kind of gave her the idea and she was like, well, you need to go back now because if you don't go back now, you're not going to be able to go. And I think now it was God kind of speaking on a different frequency. And mm-hmm. so I went back and that changed my life because it was actually, I was getting my doctorate for chemistry education, but it allowed me to really spend more time with God. When I was doing a lot of work, I would spend like 10 hours a week probably doing work probably half that time I was listening to people's messages, I was uh, reading the Bible more, I, I found my myself being closer to God, and I remember also you sending me a video um, about, uh, I think it was Josh Herring, and I was like, well, why is it that we're in the same thing? I don't see any of these miracles. I don't see what I see in the book of Acts, and I started to get frustrated to a point that I didn't even really want to go back to church, um, not because I didn't want God, but I just didn't want the same old, same old. And um, and so at that point in time, I started praying more. I started to have all my own prayer life. I got my dial up five o'clock every morning, dialed up, dialed up, dialed up. And then I started progressing. And um, 
the rest is history. But I was only, you know, four or five years and God probably did probably 15, 20 years of work in four or five years. Mm. That just reminded me of the passage that says a day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day to the Lord. Yeah. I, 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 I'm not going to get into it, but I remember a story that, um, a man of God that most people don't probably don't know, but a man named Reverend Scott Shelton, he was telling a story about him driving to a particular revival service that he was going to yeah. preach at and yeah. he was late to it or whatever. But anyway, I'll save that for another day. But to conclude it, it's almost like God transitioned him like a hundred miles down the road in less than 30 minutes or something. Right. <laughs> and it's just God, just, you don't know how it happens, but God can do things in timing that we don't understand. Anyway, right. let me share, my, let me share mine really quick. 2015 was the year for me um, that my spiritual palate, desire and understanding just completely transformed. This was a year <clears throat> where I was um, not yet married, but about halfway through that year is when I met the woman who became now my wife. And um, prior, maybe three or four months prior to meeting her, um, I was at a, a, uh, a revival service. This is when I was still living in Atlanta, <clears throat> in the Atlanta area. And I went to a revival service where um, Pastor Rashidi Collins was preaching that night. And towards the end of his, his message, I don't remember what the name of the message is or anything like that, but towards the end of the message, you, he, he, he shifted into a, a prophetic flow and it was absolutely powerful. You could feel it. You know, a lot of people, you know, they, they say certain things during a, a, a message or whatever. And it's like, oh, you know, Hey, I'll have faith, but I'm not really sure he really even believes what he was saying. He's just saying a couple of offshoot things and then blah, 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 blah. But right. this particular evening, brother Collins was in a clear, distinct flow and everybody in the room knew it. And he was calling specific things out. And this was the same year that I had got connected to some ministries um, that were really significant for me that you and I both are connected to today. Um, in fact, this November, we're actually going, Lord willing, we're going to be a part of some of the sessions that they've been doing for several years now. But Amen. Um, that same year, I got connected to that, to those ministries, bro. So all this stuff happened in the same year, met my wife, got connected to those ministries. Um, and this last thing here, the same year in that service, brother, brother Collins called out several people and, uh, to prophesy a word that God was giving him to tell them I was one of those people. And he called me up front and I was minding my own business. Then I hear my name called, not my name, but he was pointing at me and saying, you young man, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> hey boy. <laughs> and, uh, so anyway, I. Hey, I'm hungry at this point. You know, I've already been trying to break through and I, and I, and I, and I come up there and he, he, he looks me in the eye and then he says, young man, the Lord has told me that you're, that you're going to go places and you're going to have an apostolic ministry in those places. And then he looked around the room and said, does anybody know who this young man is? And there were several people in there that I knew of or whatever. They knew me, mm -hmm. but then, but then he turned back and he said, before long, not because of who he is, but because it's, it's ordained by God. Wow. You all are going to know who this man is before long. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, okay. That's chilling. <laughs> yeah. It, it was you very never chilling. told very me that story. That's chilling. Yeah, very humbling. Then three years later, my current spiritual uh, covering uh, bishop in my life in 2018, he echoed virtually the same words that Brother Collins said to me in 2015. The two of them do not know each other. Wow. And this was, of course, after I had already moved to Pennsylvania. And uh, so anyway, the, the 2015 was a big year for me. That significantly increased my signal strength. 
I completely transitioned from dial up to Wi Fi. And, uh, and, and it was just, it was just life changing. And I've never been back ever since. Um, but I'm so thankful for those moments. The rest of that year, I mean, I was on a fasting and praying rampage. A lot, some of it was ignorant. I was just doing stupid fasting, but I just was so hungry for God right, right. that I just was doing anything. And then I think it was late September is when I finally met the woman that is now my wife, my uh, precious Georgia. So anyway, that that that's my story. And um, I pray that everyone listening uh, has been thoroughly blessed and encouraged by this episode today, Wi-Fi or dial up. Listen, Wi-Fi is available to anyone who is hungry enough and desirous enough to walk with God in dimensions that maybe you've never known, but are, trust me, they are available. And we, myself and Martel do not have own the, 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 the book or, on this subject. We, we, we're not the, we're just giving some thoughts that hopefully will help somebody out there who may be listening to this, uh, irrelevant podcast. Praise God. Um, no, no, it's, it's not God. It's ordained by God. Right. But, um, anyway, receive freely give. Yes, sir. Well, God bless everyone. Thank you for listening. We've run over the amount of time we wanted to go, but we're going to wrap up right now. And uh, I pray for everyone that is listening, um, that by the grace of God, something that has been said tonight would be a landmark uh, time or moment in your life and that uh, you would go deeper uh, into knowing him and being known, known of him and by him. Bless you in Jesus name. Remember to subscribe to the podcast and anywhere podcasts are available. And uh, please make sure you go to our Instagram page now uh, at the Met Podcast. That's M E T T, and follow us there. And uh, Martel will be back with us in the future for more podcast episodes. Thank you for listening. And until next time, keep chewing on truth. The Met Podcast is possible because of faithful listeners like you. Thank you. But hey, you can also give the gift of timeless truths for the times to someone else by first subscribing to the show anywhere podcasts are available. Just search Chris J. Thompson. Also, please share Met on social media and tell a friend. Go ahead and do that right now. God bless you.